ينصح الخبراء اليابانيين باتخاذ الاجراءات التالية سبسكرايب لايك كومنت فيفرت Now, from the previous lectures, we learned in order to crack WPA or WPA2, we need to first capture the handshake and second, have a word list which contains a number of passwords that we're going to try and hopefully one of them will be the password for the target network. So right now I have both of these components and we are ready to go and crack the password. To do this, Aircrack NG is going to unpack the handshake and extract the useful information. The MIC right here, or the message integrity code, is what's used by the access point to verify whether a password is correct or not. So, it's going to separate this and put it to the side, and then it's going to use all of the other information right here, combined with the first password from the word list to generate an MIC, another message integrity code. And then it's going to compare this MIC to the one that's already in the handshake. If the MIC generated using this information plus the first password is the same, then the password used to generate this MIC is the password for the network. Otherwise, this password is wrong and it'll move to the next password. Again, it'll do the same. It'll use all of this information combined with this password, generate a new MIC, compare this new MIC to the one that's already in the handshake. If it's correct, then this is the password. If it's not, then it's going to move on to the next password. And it'll keep doing this through all of the passwords in my word list. If any of them generates the right MIC, then this is the password for the network. Otherwise, we won't be able to get the password. That's why the success of this attack really depends on your word list. So, let's see how to do this in practice. Right now, I have my word list right here. It's called test.txt. And I've actually manually added my password to the end of the list right here. Just so that when I run the word list against the handshake, I will actually find the password. Because the word list did not contain my password by default. I also have the handshake file right here, as you can see. And all of this is in my home directory, which is my root directory. So if I do ls in here, you'll see I have the word list and the handshake file. So we're ready to run aircrack ng. So we're gonna type the name of the program as usual, followed by the name of my capture file, which is WPA handshake 01.cap. So, so far it's identical to the way that we used to use it with WEP. The only difference right now, because this is a WPA2 network, we have to specify a word list with the dash W option. And the name of my word list is test.txt. So very, very simple. Aircrack is the name of my program. WPA handshake 01.cap is the name of the file that contained my handshake. And I'm using dash W to specify my word list file. I'm going to hit enter. And as you can see now, Aircrack ng is running through the word list, testing each word in the word list one by one as shown in this diagram, calculating an MIC based on this information and the word list. And then if the MIC is correct, it's going to tell me that this is the password. Now the speed of this depends on your processor and the size of your word list file. So if you have a huge file, obviously it will take you longer time. There are also online services that you can try where you upload the handshake and they have huge word lists and they have supercomputers to run through these word lists and try to give you the password. Unfortunately, I can't share their links with you, but you can easily find them on Google if you search for them. And perfect, as you can see, we managed to find the key. It's telling us the key is found and this is the key to the network. And this is the correct key because as you know, this is the same key that we got when we exploited the WPS feature. 
So now we can go ahead and connect to the network and we'll be able to run all of the cool stuff that I'm going to teach you in the post connection attack section. Now this is the only practical way known so far to crack WPA and WPA2 keys. There are methods to speed up this process so you can use the GPU for cracking because it's much faster than the CPU. That's if you have a GPU. You can also use rainbow tables. You can also pipe the word list as it's being created in crunch to aircrack ng. This way you can create bigger word lists without using any storage on your computer. There are also methods so that you can pause your cracking process and then come back after a while without losing your progress. But the main idea is the same. The only way right now to crack WPA and WPA2 is through a word list attack. You can use social engineering, however, to get the password using an evil twin attack where you trick one of the users to give you the password. This is actually all covered in my advanced network hacking course. The cracking using the GPU, piping crunch to aircrack ng, getting the password using an evil twin attack, and much more advanced network hacking techniques. If you're interested in that, then I highly recommend you have a look on my advanced network hacking course. Check out the bonus lecture of this course, the last lecture of this course. It contains links to all of my other courses and the comparison between them. ينصح الخبراء اليابانيين باتخاذ الاجراءات التالية سبسكرايب لايك كومنت فيفرتو